no way a Venus flytrap can catch this quick little wasp. Or is there? Oh, oh, be careful. Don't get too close. Don't touch the... Oh, boy. Yep. Well, there it is. The Venus flytrap has long been the stuff of sci-fi lore. It's green, it's toothy, and it's carnivorous. It looks like an anglerfish in plant form. And luckily for you, it doesn't eat humans, who aren't on Broadway. The Venus flytrap has a refined palate. Well, it's refined for a carnivorous plant. So what kind of creatures does it eat? How does it eat them? And why is this plant carnivorous? In 1875, Charles Darwin wrote that the Venus flytrap is one of the most wonderful plants in the world. And if you take one look at this thing's bright green mandibles, it's easy to see why he thought that. This isn't an average plant. Its exterior is a vivid parakeet green, and its inside leaves are a deep blood red, like a tongue. But what's really crazy about these plants is the way they eat. Each trap is two hinged leaves that produce sweet nectar to attract bugs. You probably think that's pretty standard for a plant. But around each leaf is a series of small, tooth-like bristles that interlock when the hinge snaps shut. The trap also has three short, stiff, and extremely sensitive trichomes, or hairs. And when something touches its trichomes, a Venus flytrap will definitely notice. But this sneaky plant won't shut its trap right away. This avoids wasting energy on a lackluster meal like dirt, leaves, or tiny bugs. But when something juicier is on the menu, like a slug, the hairs will bend multiple times, causing the mouth-like leaves to snap shut in less than a second. This keeps the prey and digestive juices inside while keeping harmful bacteria out. However, if the trap mistakenly closes on a pebble or leaf, it will reopen in about 12 hours to spit it out. The plant's movement in response to being touched is called figma nasty. And let me tell you something, it does get nasty. An average-sized Venus flytrap's favorite foods are ants, beetles, grasshoppers, spiders, flying insects, and slugs. But larger Venus flytraps have eaten frogs. I guess humans aren't the only ones who think frog legs are a delicacy. After catching its prey, the digestion begins, and so do the horrors. As the trap squeezes tightly around its meal, glands located on the surface of the leaves begin secreting a red sap that helps break down the insect's body. This gives the entire leaf a red, flower-like appearance. The trap also secretes an antiseptic juice that stops the insect from decaying and digestive enzymes like the ones in our stomachs. These juices dissolve the prey's soft insides, but not its tough exoskeleton. In five to 12 days, the Venus flytrap finishes its meal. The leaves reabsorb the digestive fluids, the trap reopens, and the insect's exoskeleton is usually washed away by rain or blown away by the wind. The reason these chomping plants are carnivorous is due to the soil. Venus flytraps eat insects to get nitrogen and phosphorus that the soil lacks. And despite rumors circulating on the internet, Venus flytraps do not like hamburger meat. It gives them indigestion and sometimes kills the plants. So if you have one, stick to feeding it bugs or bug burgers. While the Venus flytrap is no Audrey II from Little Shop of Horrors, it's still pretty sci-fi as far as plants go. And unfortunately, these remarkable plants are now a vulnerable species due to over-harvesting, habitat loss, and lack of sunlight. So if you see a Venus flytrap in the wild, it's okay to admire it, but it's best to leave it be. Being carnivorous and having a sensitive palate is what Venus flytraps do, and that's what makes them crazy creatures. <laughs>